Right, good evening everybody and welcome to the uh, ISAG meeting today the 11th of July. Do we have any apologies? I have apologies from Councillor Cl M. Clark and uh, Councillor Statham and Councillor B. Price. Any other apologies received? None? Right, thank you. Um, right, minutes of the previous meeting. We're looking to approve the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 11th of June 2024. Can I have a mover for those, please? Thank you, Councillor uh, Lee Wood. Right, can I have a seconder? Councillor uh, Craig Adams, please. Right, okay, thank you very much. Right, any declarations of interest? Nope. Right, there are no updates from the chair. Uh, responses to reports of the Infrastructure Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee, there are none. There are no uh, consideration of matters referred to ISAC from Cabinet or Council. Item 7, Tamworth Electric Vehicle Strategy. Right, um, this is the portfolio holder for environmental sustainability, waste and recycling. Councillor Foster has given his apologies, um, who is unable to attend but we welcome the, help, the Head of Economic Regeneration, Thomas Hobbs, who will introduce the report. Thank you. Mr Hobbs. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so um, this is, um, say, bringing the um, electric vehicle charging strategy for Tamworth um, to the Scrutiny Committee. Um, this report is uh, about a year in the making. I'll, I'll just explain a bit of the background. So in... Um, April 2023, um, Tamworth Borough Council adopted the Staffordshire County Council Electric Vehicle Charging Strategy, um, which is a kind of uh, obviously county-wide strategy um, looking at how uh, sort of electric vehicle charging can be rolled out throughout the county and the, the, the strategies and, and ways that that can be done, working both you know with with local boroughs and districts and um, kind of looking to the future to make sure that a sort of an equitable approach can be taken and um, following the adoption of that by the by the borough council it was uh, requested that a borough specific sort of strategy was undertaken so following that we appointed um, the company Amy that had produced the county council strategy and we've worked with them to produce one that is uh, sort of drilling down really based on uh, the work that was done initially by the county council um, this can really be seen as an, almost an addendum to that piece of work so that it's um, looking at more specifically how we can um, support residents of Tamworth with sort of aspirations to, to use electric vehicles in the town um, so the strategy itself is made up a few sections it's uh, looking at a sort of a, a review of the current situation what the current policies and and um, plans in place are around um, sort of environmental policies and electric vehicles specifically it then there's a review of the kind of the current uh, market for electric vehicles uh, it does a sort of a demand analysis understanding what the current and possible future demand is going to be in for Tamworth um, and it also builds on work that the, the county council have done looking at the kind of um, the need for electric vehicles in parts of the community where there isn't easy access to their own charging facilities so particularly looking at um, parts of the community where people don't have their own off-street parking so drives um, <coughs> and how those sorts of uh, areas where people might have an aspiration to have an electric car but struggle to you know to literally be able to charge one close to the house and what can be done about that so um, it identifies all of that sort of information in here um, and it then goes on to set some first kind of key principles for the borough council to look at how we can support that going forward with a, with a recognition that really um, as, a, as a sort of lower tier authority we're going to have to do whatever we do we shall have to do in partnership with other organisations particularly the county council who've got the kind of scope and scale to be able to deliver this kind of thing um, so that's really a, kind of the the, the overview of it. Um, it gives some specific recommendations at the end, um, which I'll just, I'll just skip to the right section. Um, and they're really around sort of, sort of engaging with the local community, uh, both in terms of residents and also kind of businesses and organisations that might be able to roll out um, charging infrastructure. Um, then sort of doing further work to identify 
those locations in detail, um, how those might be sort of delivered, you know, the sort of models that might deliver that, um, and then kind of an ongoing process of monitoring uh, as the kind of demand and the, and the um, I guess, the, the nature of, of electric vehicle use changes over the years. I think it's recognised that this is a fast changing kind of environment and um, <clears throat> a certain um, sort of carefulness to not jump in and risk kind of doing something that is actually in the long run not going to be the best decision for Tamworth. So um, that's all sort of captured in there. Um, hopefully that is a an overview of it and I welcome any questions if I can answer any any question on that. I'm happy to do so. Thank you, thank you very much. What type of tires are we, we looking at? Main. Um, so the the report details um, and kind of the main different types of charger. There isn't. Um, it doesn't recommend any particular one. What it's trying to do is suggest that in different locations, different types of chargers are kind of the right thing. So residential areas, in particular, you might be looking at more slow charging, trickle charging, which are much lower cost. But if you're a resident and you're charging overnight. You don't care if it takes six hours to charge it if it's going to cost you a lot less to charge than you know an ultra fast one which is done in 20 minutes but you've paid a lot lot more for that so it's kind of trying to identify how that that different sort of demand is there uh, equally sort of in in sort of town center commercial locations you might want fast charges where people are going to come in charge their car for half an hour an hour whilst they go and do some shopping or go to a cafe or something so that's that's kind of how it's pitched rather than a you know recommend a particular type on its own. Councillor Clark. Is there an amount we've got to have? Um does there's, there's not um so it it, it there's no <laughs> oh, no, is it? it's um it's Again, it kind of sets out um, a current level of a kind of demand, which is at this stage it's saying is, is not that high in Tamworth, but there is potential for it to be a lot higher. Um, so there isn't sort of a, a particular figure. It does recognise that, again, in Tamworth within Staffordshire is relatively low for current numbers of vehicle charges, which you, know, you might have noticed. Um, but there is, there is sort of plans to, to sort of rectify that in the near future um, to try and increase the numbers. But, um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons I think why the sort of the monitoring and the reviewing of it is important because I think over the next few years that will change quite significantly. And so we just need to understand as we go along and actually at what point we need to be do doing more, really. Councillor Wood. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with what you're saying, it's fast-paced technology and fast-changing and also looking at adding additional charges over the years with the rise of hydrogen obviously would it be prudent to look at this let's say for example obviously start implement, implementing this sort of ev charging but in two years time perhaps have a review and see where technology is then and if because we don't like you say we don't want to do all do all of it once when the demand isn't there and the demand might change in several years time with you know, just a recommendation if, if we could have that absolutely yeah i think that's a that's a, a a very good recommendation that we um that we do review it in two years i think that's a right sort of time scale for um, understanding how things have changed as i say there are sort of current plans to increase the numbers in the town but in a couple of years time we'll know kind of those will have, have taken place and we'll know kind of what the next sort of steps are what the situation is yeah so we can definitely add that in as a recommendation um, can I ask, what is the difference between slow charging? I know you, you've just mentioned it about trickle charging overnight, but if we've got a number of properties, I mean, I'm thinking now, if you look in the Lees, for instance, where you have got high-density housing, if we had, say, 30 vehicles there that had electric, um, were electric vehicles, I mean, how would we go about so ensuring that people could charge them efficiently? Because if you're charging them overnight 
and you've only got two electric points. Um, so what's the difference between trickle, uh, fast and ultra fast? Um. <laughs> the, the two main differences are obviously the, the speed, as you understand, and, and there is a real speed difference. So, you know, the slow charges will take hours and hours to charge. Um, <clears throat> you have sort of fast, ultra, uh, fast, rapid and ultra rapid, I think, and they each, you know, progressively get faster and faster. So the, the ultra fast ones, it's a matter of a few minutes, you know, sort of 20 minutes or something like that. Depending on the, also, it depends on the size of the, the car and its battery, but you know, it's, it's vastly different. Um, but with that comes a difference in cost as well. So um, generally, the, the ultra fast ones and the fast things are um, <coughs> much more expensive to charge. So, um, and they tend to be, you know, done by commercial companies who, you know, tend to be in high um, football uh, places. So, you know, like Ventura Park, um, where they know people want to come and they can spend half an hour and go shopping and, and use them. So, and people are prepared to pay that for them. But obviously, if you're a resident and you're going to be charging regularly at the same spot, you may not want to pay that much money every, every time you want to charge it up. Um, the, what's sort of captured in the report is that sort of understanding of, of the demand. So like you say, in a, in a particular, say, housing estate where there is um, not uh, much off-street parking, um, at the moment, what it's saying is most areas of the town, there's relatively low demand. So putting in a small number of charges will s help some people to adopt them. But I think that's why it's you say, important to review it, because in the future, if, if people do start to adopt them much more in, in, you know, throughout the town, then it, it is going to become a problem and it is something that we're going to have to look at how we can roll out much larger numbers in, in those areas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, looking at the Amy report and looking at the different types of charges, I mean, say somewhere in the Lees, it might be that they are the ones that are underground and you raise, because the other thing I was concerned about was vandalism, yeah. you know, um, and with the best will in the world, we, we need to protect them. So in car parks, we've got CCTV looking around and stuff, but not necessarily in all the streets. So... It, it, as you say, tailor fitting or tailor making the actual charges for the areas that they're in would be very sensible. And, and do I take it that we are working in partnership with all the other boroughs in Staffordshire so that we could sort of get a similar but bespoke finish? Right. I've got Councillor Wood and then Councillor Adams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, when we're obviously bringing the charges in, where are we looking at piloting the first few? Mm. I to answer that one. Yes, yeah, so I can say we, we, have, um, we are looking at one of our own car parks, um, River Drive Car Park is the first location where Tamsborough Council will be um, installing charges um, this year. So I can say that and we can probably um, yeah, elaborate more very soon, hopefully, uh, in the... Uh, the, the comms team will put out information, but yes, we will be putting them in on Tamworth Borough, Borough Council car parks. Um, and then we are working with Staffordshire County Council and all the other the boroughs and districts um, at a much larger rollout of, of charging points um, with uh, the Levi funding in, in involved. But um, at this stage, that's kind of an, an ongoing um, project, which again, I'll probably have to say more in the future, or we'll certainly release more information about in the future. Thank you. Um, the w simple. Um, I wondering why there are price difference between a slow tyre and a fat tyre. They should be about the same price, minus any fees what a com another company tires in. It how how's the tyres in the same? There should be the same price between the two. The only difference is how much you pay per hour. You get a fat tyre, goes faster, so you pay more. Well, our, but it's sort of end up the same amount. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not an expert in the pricing of them. I don't. I I, th I think that is obviously a large element of it. Is simply the commercial element of the of rapid charges, and they're probably a lot more expensive to to produce and install. Is my guess. So probably part of that is recouping the cost of producing one. Um, I believe also, obviously, if you draw a lot more off the grid in a short space of time, that's potentially costing more 
on the you know on the the grid basically you know that that does have a cost attached to it because obviously the levels of demand you know vary um so if you're charging overnight typically it's, it, you know electricity is cheaper um so i think there's an element of that involved but i say i'm not an expert in how it works so i think there's um it's one of those things that that you know we probably don't have much control over unless we were to uh, install our own charges um which is a very costly exercise yeah. did you want to come back councillor adams yeah wouldn't it be at the idea to actually control our charges yourself or the partner with the company or doing it so we can actually bring more revenue into the council so that is sort of explored in the in the report about that and it is it is a possibility to to either buy them ourselves or to work with a partner um but it's just sort of the things like the cost involved the kind of the expertise and the risk involved in doing it obviously will have to be taken into account um and, the, and being a small council with sort of limited resources and capability it's quite a big undertaking as, as you know as opposed to a larger organization whereas if we work you know have an external provider they're obviously able to bring on bring their expertise into it but obviously that comes at a cost um you know for them doing that so yeah that's that's all sort of explored in there i think at the moment as well councillor adams we're looking at trialing it we don't know how technology is going to perform and and develop and if we've spent a lot of money up front as a council we might lose out um i think that's one of the things that was in the report that yes um with the the ev charging hub that we're looking to put in the river drive car park the external provider that we're working with they do all the design and development um, they install it they maintain it repair it when they need to um, so the risk is all sat with them and not with the borough council the cost of the hub that's going uh, in town is many hundreds of thousands of pounds as well so there's a huge cost attached to the delivery of a single charger but for a hub of chargers like we're looking to do it's quite considerable so that's a that's a big consideration when we're looking at sort of like the business model around do we deliver it ourselves with TBC money and have all the, the issues that go with it or do we um, align with um, an external organisation that's specialised in this and they do it on our behalf so really we're just supplying the space in the car park for them. Thank you. Does that satisfy you? Uh, got one question on that. Will we get any income from that? So we won't take income from the machines themselves. What we will take income from is people obviously come to park. When they park and charge up, they will still have to pay for a parking ticket if it's in parking hour, you know, when the parking is, is paid for. So um, in that sense, we will have a, a source of income which will kind of allow us to keep maintaining the site. But um, the, the purpose of that um, was really to try and get that um, provision into the town. Uh, and actually, they were the only only organization company that, that tendered when we when we went out for it so there wasn't much demand at that stage for um charging in the town center from commercial companies unfortunately one other issue i have is that we have all these areas which have got no access to electric charging also we've got uh, high-rise flats we've got uh, low-rise flats so I would like to see that in future, I don't know whether we go through the planning committee or whether we go to the local plan, but that we put a, um, a requirement that, say, 10% of parking spaces have EV chargers or something like that, so that people can charge who live in these properties and don't then have to go out of areas. And I, I know I've worded that very badly, but if we could look at that and, and make that as a resolution going forward, um, would, any, would anybody support that? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you.
Um, just to say that with the review of the new local plan, um, with the climate change commitments that will that will run through that document, which will be more significant than the current local plan, we would be looking at EV charging and what role that plays in being able to deliver. Uh, what I would say is that it would only be on new developments. Yes. We wouldn't be retrospectively applying it to the existing housing stock in Tamworth. Thank you. Right, are there any other questions on this report? Right, we have two um, recommendations. The first that Councillor Wood mentioned, uh, mentioned, which is that the strategy be reviewed in two years' time. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Clark. And my recommendation to the local plan and the planning committees that new developments contain EVG, EV charging points. Right, thank you, Councillor Wood. Right, all those in favour? Thank you. Oh, and the third thing is, do we approve the report? And I would say that, yes, we do. Can we just have a mover and a seconder for the report? Can we have a mover and a seconder for the report? Councillor Adams and Councillor Clark. Thank you. Right, can I thank you very much for your attendance? And those of you that can leave, feel free to leave. <laughs> <laughs> You're free. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Right, we now go to item 8, which is working group updates. Councillor Price is absent, so that is deferred. Um, have you seen item 9? If there's anything on the forward plan that you would like to bring forward. I haven't seen anything myself. Is anybody else? No. Right, item 10. Uh, if you've looked at the work plan, you'll know that at the next meeting, we have got the Joint Waste Service update, which I think might be a, a note rather than a huge... I think it'll be a full one next time. Full time, time this yeah. one. Yeah. And then we'll look at maybe bring it as briefing notes. We're going to look at review of the Bulky Wastes Service and maintenance of estates and open spaces, which is where we're looking at street scene. And I'm hoping to incorporate into that trees and, and stuff like that. So, and with the bulky waste, we should be able to talk about fly tipping. So I think there'll be quite a bit for next time round. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. And we've got a briefing note on the nature recovery declaration. Right. We now come to item 11, exclusion of the press and public. I'm going to advise the committee will now look to move into an excluded session in accordance with the provision of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England regulations, 2012 and section 100A.4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 3 of part 1 of Schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I'm, can I have a mover for that, please? Councillor Wood, a seconder? Thank you. Councillor Adams. Councillor <laughs> Clark, I'll get you next time. Uh, there are no members of the public here. Right. Um, if you've been watching on YouTube, thank you very much.